Okay. So I'm going to find the angle of my ellipse. And I'm looking at how this guideline's pretty much in the middle. And I'm just going to um, hold my pencil towards the end. Once you have gotten some elliptical marks on there, then you're going to clean it up, refine, fix, erase the lines you're not going to use, keep the lines you are. Remember, I'm drawing darker than you should. Then before I say like, yep, that ellipse is good, I'm gonna look at this as if it's vertical in front of me. And then I can really tell like, okay, this side's a little more rounded, this side's a little bit pointier. So then I can tell when I'm looking like straight on at it at, with your guideline vertical in front of you. Then I can kind of fix a little. Oh, she's absent. From there, uh, the only reason why we have the guideline on there is to make parallel sides so it's not angled all funky. And so this is the one thing that some of you even drawing the wine bottle on your final draft is you're not like turning it vertically and checking to make sure it's straight with your guideline. So while it's vertical, then I'm going to block in my sides. And my jar is pretty big. It's more like a rectangle, but when you're looking at your jar, it might, some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. It might look more squarish. So I am going to kind of break it down into like a general rectangular shape. But really what I'm concerned with is do I have the parallel sides? And is it parallel to my guideline? Once you have put your parallel sides on there, then you can erase your guideline. We don't really need it anymore. It was just for the parallelness. All right, while it's vertical in front of us, we're going to um, create the edges for the mouth or the rim. That's where the lid would screw on. So we're gonna create these two sides and then we can draw the double ellipse that we can see in the inside and the outside. So, and it will slightly change. We're gonna look at like how it curves and how the curves meet. But we'll just give ourselves a general guideline and I'm gonna give myself a little mark like it's about this wide or it comes out this far and you're going to draw an offset curve meaning it's like a parallel curve but since curves aren't parallel it's an offset curve so similar to what we did with one point perspective in the letters offset curve So that, um, the bottom of the rim or the mouth is also what, if you can see the front of the jar is what you can see in the inside. So I'm gonna give myself a little guideline of how much of that can I see. And then I'm gonna connect my outside ellipse to the inside ellipse. Like double ellipses. And then you can kind of clean up a little bit. So 
side now. The next part we're going to look at, so take a pause real fast. So this still looks kind of like awkward a little bit because when you look closely, all of these um, ellipses, sorry, there we go, meet at the curve. So they all meet at the height of the curve. So the front opening right here meets at the curve. This back one curves into itself and then the inside one as well so we're really taking a look at what does this area look like at the top and then at the bottom so when we look a little bit oops, sorry, when we look a little bit closer then I'm going to and it's called your counter sinking your curves where they meet up with each other So you're going to round that part off, clean it up. In the bottom part, I'm going to round this part off so my um, ellipses meet together or curve together. So you're adjusting. Okay, now we're going to do guidelines for, and some of your wine bottles have this too, like where the lid screws on, it's called a thread, just like a screw has like the little ridges on it, it's a threading, or it's the threading. So it's like these little pieces on the mouth of the rim. So I just look for like the fact that this one is like, a, if here's halfway, it's a little bit above halfway, and it slightly angles to the right. So I'm just going to give myself a guideline for where each of these little pieces are because if you notice, like they pick up a lot of highlights and there's dark values like next to them. So you're going to get a lot of range of value in that area. So we want to make sure we have it drawn. Like usually the front and back of the glass stuff, you have a lot of detail. All right, so I'm going to give myself a guideline of where I see that first one. And it's like kind of in the middle when it angles back. I have a piece of another one that's going off of the rim. Guideline for another one. So I put guidelines in there, and then they kind of look like worms, where they're like pointy at the ends, but a little thicker in the middle. And then I look for, is there any other thickness of glass that I should draw? Like, so for me, like where the rim attaches, like right here, I have a double thickness of glass. So wherever it's been like fused together, then I'm going to draw the double, double line for the thickness of glass where it meets the body of the jar. If you have the same thing, you're going to add it in there. Like I can then see it in the inside. Now 
Actually, now that I look closer, I see like a little piece of them. For this next part, it's going to help you judge how long your jar is, and this also really affects your shading, so you make some good decisions. Uh, but before I talk about like the back end, um, for a lot of them, they're honestly they're like old pickle jars or salsa jars or whatever. So there might be like a little ridge, and you can feel it on there, and then I can see it. It like affects my shading, and it affects the distortion in the glass right here. And so if you have a little ridge, that's like another ellipse. So I am going to draw that line because like, especially right here, it'll affect my shading. I also have one like back here. I can see it at the end. And so this also affects my shading. So if you have any ridges or like elevated parts of the glass, you are going to kind of just pencil those on there. Oh, sorry. I don't need to move that. So I'm going to pencil those on there. So I have my front one, which... We're going to adjust the side, so it's probably a little bit more curved in that area. Okay, then for the back part, I want to first draw the back end. Or if the back end is facing you and you just drew the back end first, then, geez, sorry. Uh, then you can draw the front end. So what I'm really paying attention to is how much space is, so we have our internal ellipse. How much space is between here and here? Like, what do I see in between? So I'm going to make a judgment about how much space and give myself a little mark where that ellipse is in the inside. So I'm getting myself a little mark. And then I am going to turn it vertically to do the ellipse so that it's a similar angle as the top. Let me zoom out a little bit. So if the top is kind of angled like so, then I want the bottom to be similar. Or if yours is slightly angled, you want the bottom to be angled the same. If you just look at vertical, that kind of takes some of your guesswork out. So I have my guideline. And then you're going to clean it up and I look at how the back of your jar rounds off. So for me, I'm going to add the round, round sides and then I would clean up. And then I am going to flop it over and look and see, like, do you have any thickness of glass? So even like with the wine bottles too, like the bottom of your bottom and top of your item has the, the most thick areas of glass. So I can actually see like a little extra at the bottom. I'm going to add because there's highlights that pick up there. I have that crease in the glass. That I put it out to you guys. I'm going to add that on there. And if you can see it on the other side, it actually is like an ellipse back there. So if you can see on the other side of glass or inside, you would draw that part. And then you're going to adjust the sides. Like, does it curve out here at the top for you? Is it like a squarish curve and then it's just straight? Um, I think I took out all the ones that curved in in the middle. Like those were a little bit more difficult. So take a look at how does it curve where it meets the rim or the mouth. And 
and you need to adjust the sides. And I usually do that when looking at it vertically so that you can make sure it's symmetrical. It's the most realistic jar you've ever done. So on your own, on your still life drawing on Wednesday, I'm going to have you like take a look at spacing, like how much of the inside can I see? Is there any refining that I'm going to do? So you would, if you're drawing a jar in your still life, you're going to get it to this point before you start to value map. Okay, so as soon as you're done refining, cleaning up, erasing lines you don't need, um, you'll grab your notes. But I'll give you guys like a minute or two to finish up drawing. So if you are done drawing, you could pencil in your shadow. The cast shadows are interesting on these jars. You can kind of sketch in where you see shadow parts if you're finished if not we'll just throw it on there at the very end tomorrow Step two is what really makes it look like glass and paying attention will make your uh, shading go a little bit easier. So you're gonna draw what you can see through the object. If it's on your still life, you're gonna have some fabric probably to draw through it. Um, for this one, you probably can see the tabletop edge or on your still life if you have another object. For this one, we're gonna start with the white paper and then you'll also do the tabletop edge. So let me get set up to show you that okay so what I'm looking for is we're first going to put like the angle of the white paper that you can actually so you can see better the angle of the white paper that we can see then I look at every little part let me get my viewpoint a little bit more and I would look at how I can see the white paper go into the rim I can see a little piece of white paper edge like right in there on the inside and the thicker the glass, the more it distorts. It makes it look kind of wobbly or wiggly looking. So then I'm going to follow my eye, and I'm going to draw the distortion of the white paper. And I'll come back and draw this part and how it curves up. Then, for me, I don't have a tabletop edge, but you can see where my computer is. Well, then I'm going to draw where I can see my computer line going through. And for you guys, it'll be like tabletop edge. If you can see, like you might be able to see that maybe there's a chair of the person in front of you, then you would draw that too. Don't draw the person, but if you can see the chair through the glass, put that in there. So major stuff that you can see through the glass, you're going to add to your drawing. So start with the white paper. So I'm going to find the angle of the white paper in front of me.
So you're going to follow your eye with the edge of the white paper and how it's not straight. So yours might not be as distorted as mine, but it shouldn't be just straight. Then you're going to look, can I see the tabletop edge in there? Sometimes if you close one eye, then you only have one viewpoint you're looking at. That might be helpful when you're trying to follow along. Okay, so I have my white paper, and then I have where I can see, like, my um, computer keyboard, like, right there. And I'm going to finish off with my white paper in the background. So if you can see white paper up here, put it on there. If like your glass jar comes to like the very edge of the white paper, you can put the edge of the white paper. Mine, like looking at spacing it, would just go off the page. The next part is, actually let's do our notes. Let's take a couple of notes and then we'll step by step through it. Okay, <clears throat> so this is very similar to the acrylic paintings that we did back in December, where we're gonna look for shiny white parts and put a W. We're gonna look for the darkest, darkest values and put a D for dark. Um, and then, so I look for those two first and then you're kind of looking in between. So. We're going to outline areas that are light but not straight up white and areas that maybe are precise values that are like a medium. So let's do the um, light and darks first. So we're going to outline the highlights. And we're going to label those with a W. And so those are the shiny white. Then we're going to outline the darkest areas and we'll label it with the letter D for dark. So you're not going to want to, for the D, it does, the D parts, it's not going to matter like how heavy you press, but for the parts that have a W in them, you're going to want to draw very lightly because we're going to erase the W out and it's going to stay the white of the paper. So for your highlights, the shiny white parts, we're going to have to go around them the whole time, which is why we're outlining them, because it has to stay the white of the paper. So I'm looking at my glass jar. Um, actually, let me get more of my viewpoint for you guys. I see more than that. Okay. So I'm going to, um, like in here, I'm going to draw that highlight. I'll probably just, I already drew this thickness of glass, so I'm going to put an ending and a beginning part for that highlight. This squiggly, shiny part, I'm going to outline. This part, shine of light right there, I'm going to outline. And then down here, I'm going to outline that. Everything else, even though it's a, a clear glass jar, everything else is some variety of light or medium value or dark value. So you're going to take a look at your jar, and you're going to do this for what highlights you can see and what super dark areas you can see on your jar. So I usually do this piece by piece. Like I would look at, okay, what do I see on this part of the rim? What do I see inside? 
What do I see in this part of the rim? What do I see in this part of the rim? So really slowing down and value mapping is going to help you with realism. All right, so if I see a shiny white part in here, I'm going to put a W in there. I'll put a W there. Then before I move on from that area, I'm going to look and see, do I see any really dark parts? So let's say along the edge of that one, I'll put a D for dark. Plus, like the part um, that I already outlined above the white paper is fairly dark. So I'm going to put little Ds in those locations saying, hey, anything above this white paper is a little bit darker. Then I'm going to move, and inside here, I, do, I barely see anything. We'll talk about um, light values on top of the white paper in just a minute. But we're mostly looking for shiny white parts and super dark areas. And so you're not going to want to move around very much when you're trying to value map because every time you shift and move, so do the values. And if it looks like a fuzzy area, just turn it into a shape. So this is where my really shiny white parts were on top. So I put all my shiny white parts in, then I'm going to, and I put little W's in the inside saying, hey, this is white, go around it. Um, now I'm going to come back and take it piece by piece and look for um, really dark values. So I look at the curves, look at everything above the white paper. And on your still life, it'll be everything above the cloth or the fabric. I'm going to say like my keyboard is more medium. And then the tabletop. And so if you can see the tabletop through, then you are going to, and you can see the lines on it, you're going to sketch it in there because those are probably medium. You can just sketch in the lines. You don't have to outline them or label them.
All right. Then you guys are taking a look, especially anything above your tabletop. Are there any like fuzzy areas that you could turn into a shape and just turn it into a shape? So I have like, I'm gonna outline them and say those are also medium. But it looks like just like a fuzzy area, you're just gonna turn into a shape. Where the white paper is, you don't have to draw the glue, but you are looking for any kind of streaks that are lighter but not white, or they could be medium that you're kind of filling in. And I look in the inside too, if you can see the inside. Are there any light streaks that aren't straight up white? So glass is all about observation and really looking. Because you're looking at layers of glass. You're looking at what do I see inside and what do I see outside. And so my areas that are lighter, like not white but lighter, I'm still going to label with an L saying, hey, these are light. The blender will do the work for us, but we want it there so we know to go around. So it looks like a lot, but if you just take it piece by piece, each little section, like what do I actually see? You're gonna add it in there and label it. So the labeling is important because you have two days on your glass on your own still life. Because one day you'll, draw, you'll refine and value map, and the next day you'll come back and shade. And so then all your shading is planned out is it probably is not going to look exactly like that the next day. 